Ladies and gentlemen, I am back. That's right, the one true Omni Gamer. And today, I'm talking about Street Fighter 4. To say that I'm a fan of this series is a gross understatement. Before I was the one true Omni Gamer, I was just an average everyday gamer. And one of the few games that was gifted to me at Christmas was Street Fighter 2 Turbo for the Super Nintendo. My friends and I would while away the hours, constantly beating our brains out with our chosen characters. Mine was Ryu, a simple, well-balanced character which, of course, dominated the competition. We would play for a thousand matches, heck, maybe even a million, but we would never get tired, unless, of course, it got dark, which it did in most cases. But those were good days. Thanks to Street Fighter 4, those glory days are here again. For vets like myself, or newcomers who just know fighting games from Soul Calibur, <laughs> you have much to learn. Now, Street Fighter 4 begins between Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 3, in which another World Martial Arts tournament is beginning. However, this year, this tournament is not being sponsored by Shadowloo, Capcom's answer to Cobra. No, this year's tournament is being sponsored by an organization known as SIN. SIN, seriously Capcom? Why don't you call it Hellspawn Incorporated? We make devil fire. <laughs> but I digress. For one reason or another, fighters sign up. And whether they are, as my brother would say, jobberific, or if their storylines help solve the mystery of this sinful organization, really depends on the player and the characters they play. I don't have to talk about the characters too much. Capcom has wisely brought back the legendary fighters from Street Fighter 2. You know the ones. The mean green Brazilian machine, Thunder Thighs from Red China, the hardest working haircut US military, all armed with martial arts that defy gravity and shock the mind. They even brought back Alpha Darlings Rose and Sakura and the new challengers Kami and Fei Long, as well as a few others to the console versions of this game. Of course, they have to be unlocked. Imagine that. In order to keep things fresh and interesting, Capcom's added four new fighters to the mix. Crimson Viper, a technological diva, Rufus, a fat chubba fighter in the Kung Fu martial arts, a forte, an odd combination between chef and Mexican wrestler, and Abel. He's got amnesia because that was the only gimmick in the big book of video game cliches that Capcom didn't use. While the other three fighters are great, I have to say the best out of the bunch is Abel. And it's not because of his fighting style, which is great by the way, it's the fact that he's a polite fighter. Which only goes to show you could throw a guy 50 feet off the ground, grab him, and bring him back down breaking every bone in his body on the ground. You don't have to be rude about it. Abel always apologizes when he defeats his opponents. That's class, baby. That's class. It doesn't matter what character you pick, however. Not only do you have to know the moves of that said character, but all the others as well. You never know who you're going up against. And this ain't Smash Brothers, people. You can't just press A to victory. You gotta be quick-witted and sore thumbs to be a champ here. Especially when you get done with the story mode and move on to time attack and survival. Those matches have special rules about it that change up the game and truly test your mettle as a street fighter. You succeed in those challenges and you get special rewards like palette swaps for your favorite characters, new taunts for your favorite characters, even some ranking titles and emblems for your profiles. Fail, however, and only frustration and control bashing awaits you in the future. But that is nothing compared to the horrors of online play. This is where the best of the best, and sometimes the worst of the worst, come and do carnage. You think getting no scoped in Halo is bad? Or what about getting griefed in World of Warcraft? That is nothing compared to a straight up beat down 1990 style in Street Fighter 4. It burns like acid in your soul. But it's not all that bad really. 
accumulation does inspire one to play it better. They'll find all of the tricks, so the next time they're online, they can have an epic game worth bragging about. On the other hand, humiliation plus failure inspires whiners as well, which I will get to later on in the review. The way this game does play is under the category easy to learn but difficult to master. You have your standard fighting staples, three punches, three kicks, back to block, up to jump, down to duck, that sort of thing. Of course any combination of said button presses activates a character special attack which range from projectiles, physical attack, grapple attack, or an anti-air attack. Now when you talk about super and ultra combos, that's when things get a little different. Because in the past you can use super or ultra in one same power bar. But in Street Fighter 4, there's two different bars for the two different attacks. The super combo bar fills up for every successful attack you do against your opponent. You fill up the bar and you can unleash a super combo against said opponent. However, that bar is split in force. And if you wish, you can use each quarter of that bar to power up your specialty move, make a fireball that much more powerful, or connect more hits with a physical attack, that sort of thing. Of course, you'll be trading off your super combo for these powered up EX specialty attacks. But really, that's part of the tactics of the game. You gotta know which move to use for what situation and what opponent. Ultra combos, however, only exist to cause people pain as stylishly as possible. Which is ironic because the only way to build up the ultra combo meter is to get pain inflicted upon yourself. I know, I know, I know, it's against the gamer code to bring the smack down on oneself, but as they say, you gotta take it as well as give it sometimes. While super and ultra combos spice things up, the real game changer in the fighting machine is focus attacks. They are a chargeable single hit blow that also acts like a parry. So if you're attacked you can negate that damage and recharge it over time so long as you don't get hit for a second time. All the while countering that attack with one of your own. Depending on how long you charge the focus attack you will either push them back or send them falling to the ground and even breaking their guard. What's more is that you can use your focus attacks to chain into other attacks and even avoid damage if someone is going to try to break your own focus attack. Which brings me to my next point. Focus attacks can be broken, either by multi-hit attacks or special armor break special moves. So don't go thinking spamming the focus attack is going to get you victory, because like anything else in this game, you gotta know how to use it and when. It is because of these features, plus it looks like a well-drawn graphic novel and sounds like a high-octane knife fight, that Street Fighter 4 gets my highest non-perfect rating of Platinum. Before I wrap this up, I would like to address the whiners for a moment. Yeah, I heard you all out there complaining about one thing after another with this game. Oh, Zangief is broken. People keep using Ken too much. I keep getting beat up by a 13-year-old. Wah, wah, wah. Enough already. This is just a game, for goodness sake. This isn't preschool. Don't take it out on Street Fighter 4 just because you all can't figure out the mechanics yet. That's no way to act, especially for veterans, who, I'm finding out, are doing most of the complaining. Did I throw my controller on the ground, turn off my game, and had a blogo tantrum when I lost a half a dozen matches? No. I jocked up, played again, and kept playing until I got the hang of things. That's how gamers are supposed to deal with games, not whine and complain about it. Well, unless the game is truly broken, which is not the case for Street Fighter 4. Well, that's it for me. Until next time, happy gaming!